All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this Dell XPS 13 9360. So this actually has an issue with the screen. The screen just stays black, nothing happens. So hopefully replacing the screen is going to fix that. So we're going to need a JIS-0 as well as a T5 and most likely JIS-1 as well. So we're going to use the T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver and remove all the screws around the edges. All right, you want to keep the screws in order because they are different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that, I put them flat side down like that. On my desk in the pattern, I remove them. So we have like this U shape here. And then under here, we have a, I believe that's a JIS-0 screw. All right, if this video helps you out, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right. So let's go ahead and continue removing these screws. It will help if you have some good pry tools. You might need metal ones for this. Um, I'm actually able to use my fingernails to get this out, but uh, if you're just using plastic pry tools, it might be pretty difficult on this model. So let me show you here once I get all these screws out. Okay, and the last one. I'm gonna switch to the JS0, and we'll remove this screw that's underneath this flap. Okay, again, keep all the screws in order. Okay, get that there. All right, so usually you can't really, as you can see, it's hard to pull this. Actually, we got a little bit to lift here. So if you're lucky, you can kind of get a bit of this to lift up here by pulling up on this, and then you can kind of go around the sides. Um, but usually what I'll do is I'll open this up. I'll go to this little edge here, okay? And then I'll use my thumb uh, to push on here while I pull with my fingernails in the gap here. Again, you do need like some good fingernails here, otherwise you won't be able to pop this. But you pull on this, okay? And usually you can kind of get in. You might have to go from this side actually, okay? So go on here, and here you can see I can actually pop the metal out. So I'm pushing with my thumb here and pulling with my fingernails here, and that undoes the clips there. And here you can see now it's popping out, okay? Again, you can also use pry tools and kind of pry it, but it helps having leverage to push here with your thumbs and then kind of rotate it out that way. Okay, you wanna be careful opening and closing this with these screws out because the hinge mechanism on these aren't very good and a lot of times the part that the screws mount into are not strong enough and they break. This model is known for that issue. And yeah, so let's go ahead and continue along the edges. Push with your thumb just like this and work your way up the sides, okay? Just like that, same thing over here now. Work your way up these sides, okay? I can actually feel it pop out. And once you get all those clips out, okay, you can see here, all right, in real time, no tricks or anything, there you go. Um, I kind of like, don't like how on other videos, they just show you pull the cover off, and they don't show you how to do it. So that's why I make these videos the way I do. Some people don't like that, um, and they want it just for entertainment, but mine are purposely <laughs> like this to show you how to do things, all right? So we're gonna now switch to the JIS-1 um, screwdriver. Actually, we're still gonna need the JIS-0 for one of these screws here. So let me actually zoom in here. Um, the battery has a few screws that we need to remove. So we're gonna remove this little silver screw here. Okay, that one's JIS-0. Everything else is JIS-1 uh, inside, I believe. Okay, so let's switch over to the JIS-1 screwdriver. Let's zoom out here again. And I'm going to try and show you guys all the screws that need to be removed. We're going to actually get a thumbnail here. So let me put this lined up in the center. And we'll take this as a thumbnail. It's kind of crooked, but can't get it lined up 100%. So there we go. Okay, we're going to now remove the rest of the battery screws here. So we got this one. Again, keep all the screws in order because they are different size, shape, and lengths, and mixing them up will be an issue. Okay, so we got that, and then we got two screws down at the bottom here. They actually put little arrows pointing to where the screws are, okay? So that way you know where you took them out from. Um, all of these are flat, uh, big top black screws here, okay? And they're also pretty short, but uh, this one, there's a silver one up here, okay? Then they have this. I don't know why they did that, but they put tape holding this dumb... Um, the speaker wires over here so we got to peel that up and be careful while peeling this up you don't want to damage the battery so make sure you're not peeling up the layers of the battery here okay and we're just going to take out the ones that were on the battery itself um, this cable actually used to be underneath um, 
and I took that out. So this cable used to be underneath this part of the battery and earlier I took it out to make it easier to work on. So I'm going to show you how it used to be so that you can kind of um, know what you're dealing with and how to work on it. Oh, this one, the plastic, a little bit of it came off as you can see. They put this little black plastic layer on top to cover it. So I'm going to have to put some um, electrical tape or when this sticks back down it should be okay. Anyways, we're going to peel this off. Okay. All right, let me get a little electrical tape so I can just cover that real quick. Keep it a little bit safer. This one's kind of just a layer covering the actual uh, lithium packs inside. So this layer that came out isn't really a big deal, but uh, still we want to kind of keep it protected. All right. So I just cut a piece of black electrical tape here and we're just going to stick it on here to cover it a little bit. Okay. Just like that. All right. Okay. So we got that. Sorry if my head got in the way. All right. So to remove the battery, what you do, this one's a little bit tricky because it's so short, there's not much room. Usually what I do is I lift this up. I get underneath with my finger here to grab one side of the cable and my other finger here. And then I'll pinch the two together and I'll use that to pull on the cable. Okay, so just like that and there we go. So we got the cable out and then we're going to slide the battery out this way. Again, normally the battery is on top of that cable. Um, but yeah, I left it on top because it's easier to work with that way. Okay, so we got the battery out. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to drain the power because we don't want to risk any damage to the LCD um, circuit. This is very important. We're going to press and hold the power button for 15 seconds or longer. This drains any residual power and makes it a lot safer to work on the LCD LVDS removal, the cable. Excuse me. If you don't do this, you can burn out the backlight circuit. You can burn out the LCD cable, the screen, and other components. So just do this. It's only about 15 seconds or a little more, and you should be good to go. All right, so there we go. We removed or we held that button down. Next, we're going to disconnect the LCD LVDS connector as well as the wireless card. If you're wondering, there's an M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD here. Very easy to remove. One screw comes up slightly at an angle. You can pull it out. The RAM is soldered to the motherboard, so you can't upgrade that. The wireless card you can remove here. We're going to actually remove the antennas and stuff here in a bit. You also have the BIOS CMOS RTC clock uh, RTC battery, uh, real-time clock battery. Right. Obviously, this is the speaker connector. You got one wire here to this speaker, and the other wire going across to this one. Right. You got this cable here that connects the motherboard to this daughter board, um, and that has the SD card slot, USB 3.0 port, and I believe the power button is also part of it. And then also this cable, which is I think this is for the camera, and then the LCD LVDS is this all goes to that one cable. Okay. Not much else here, CPU is soldered to the motherboard, and the DC jack charge port is actually under here as well, so if you want you can peel up this tape, and you can see here there's the charge port connector here. This design, let me see here, oh, okay, this charge port is kind of the annoying design where they actually put the wire underneath here, there's a screw mount here, and then um, they wrapped the the DC jack wire underneath and then it comes back out up here and then plugs in here. So to remove this charge port you have to take out this screw and then you have to take out a bunch of the screws for the motherboard, pull up the motherboard slightly and then you can take it out. Either that or um, you can take the whole motherboard out but I find that's kind of a lot of work to remove this. So I actually just remove a bunch of these motherboard screws enough to lift it up and then I can pull that out and then you kind of have to just tuck it back in. Anyways. Let's go ahead and replace the um, screen. The screen has multiple cables going into it. There's a cable here, cable here, wireless antennas, and then this one with the LCD and this. Maybe there's the touch screen. I don't know. Anyways, let's go ahead and remove the screws here holding the LCD LVDS connector. So I'm going to zoom in here. Two screws. Again, keep track of all the screws because they are different size, shape, and lengths. You don't want to mix them up. If you do, you can end up with a lot of problems, okay? So we're going to get this screw out, those two screws. Now we can move this metal plate up and out of the way. Okay. Again, you do want to press and hold the power button after disconnecting the battery if you're going to do this. 
All right, and then we're gonna disconnect the LCD LVDS connector here, lift that up. You can use this as a pull tab. Usually, sometimes if it doesn't come out easily like that, you can get underneath and pry it up like this, okay? So we got this out. We're gonna actually peel this cable off because, or this uh, cover off because we're gonna need that for the other, um, the other screen. And we're gonna undo this screw down here. We do need a um, JAS0 screwdriver for that. So let's go ahead and remove this one up here first. Okay, we'll set that aside. And then do we need anything else? We will have to take the hinge screws out obviously. So let's peel this up. We'll peel this adhesive off as well. Okay, and then we're gonna have to disconnect these cables and get this out. So to get this out, it's gonna be somewhat of a pain because the fan is on top, so yeah, let's go ahead and peel the adhesive here holding this in place. Okay, and here you can see there's a fan screw under here, so we're going to have to remove this. This is also JAS0, so let's go ahead and switch to JAS0. We'll take this screw out. Okay, we're not going to take the fan out of here, we're just removing the screws to make it easier to lift it slightly so we can get this out of there. Okay. I'm going to undo the screw down here as well. There we go. Okay, hopefully you saw that, that screw and the one underneath this piece of tape. And now we can lift the uh, fan up enough just so we can untuck the cable from there. Okay, so we can get that up. And then we do have to peel this stuff out. So let's go ahead and peel this off completely. Set that aside. And then we have this that we need to peel out. Okay like that and hopefully we can lift it up enough that we can take this cable out so we'll try and pull the fan up and get this cable out from under there there we go okay and now we have this cable and we also have to disconnect this part here so I use my fingernails at the little edge of the plastic part of the connector and I kind of wiggle it as I pull it and there we go and this one actually says uh, card reader power interesting so I guess the card reader gets power from here I don't know Anyways, we'll push that cable out of the way. Let me zoom out a bit. So we got that out of the way. We're gonna have to take these two screws out and then we'll also have to take this out. So let's go ahead and get the wireless card out here. So this is actually a JAS1, but I used the JAS0 and it worked okay. But if you do that, be careful, make sure the screwdriver isn't skipping. All right, I'm gonna actually switch back over to the JAS1 screwdriver now because these hinge screws, we definitely need to use that. Okay, here you can see wireless antenna, the black ones to the black arrow, white ones to the white arrow. We're going to pop these antennas off. So I just go at the tails and then just pull straight up, just like this. If the wireless card's going up, hold it down and then pull up just at the tail, just like that. Then we're going to take the wireless card out so it's not in our way and we'll set that aside. Okay. All right, next thing we got, we got these two cables here. Um, this says JTS, so I'm guessing this is for the touchscreen. So if you can, you grab the white part of the connector and then wiggle and pull it out. And oh yeah, underneath touchscreen. And then here we're gonna pull this, this says JCAM, so this is probably the webcam. All right, so yeah, camera. All right, there we go. So we got all these cables disconnected. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the hinges, uh, hinge screws out. So the best way to do this um, is actually to carefully slowly open up the screen all the way or not all the way but about 90 degrees right then we're gonna rest the thing down here like this over the edge of the desk okay i'm gonna have to zoom out here so you can see i got all this junk on my table anyways we're gonna remove these screws holding the hinges in place okay so there's one here all right there's another one down here So it looks like there's only two hinges on each, those two, or hinge screws. All right, those two, and then these two. And after we get these two screws out, we should be able to lift the screen up and out, and then we'll get the replacement one and put it in, okay? And hopefully that will solve the issue they're having. So we got both screws out, okay? You can see the screen kind of flops down now, and then we can go ahead and lift this up and out. And there's the screen. So I checked the cable already, it was tight, so pretty much the screen itself something is wrong with it okay anyways um, let's go ahead and open up the replacement screen now so we'll set this aside 
Okay, so I got this replacement screen in this box here. Let's open this up. I guess we'll open it from this side. Okay, and let's see if that's enough. Can we open this? Okay, okay let's open. Okay. Out. Okay, so here we go. Oh, there's a piece of plastic coming out of here. Okay, hopefully this screen is good. So we'll unwrap this thing. Put your tape here. Oh no, is that wrapped all the way around? Okay, flip it this way. Okay, there we go. Found the end of the tape. If you're wondering why I don't cut it, a lot of times I end up reusing this kind of tape. <laughs> but, uh, anyways, oh, I guess it wrapped on itself, so I can't do that now. Right, peel this off. Alright, and we'll get... Oh, this one's all wrapped on itself already, so... So now we got that done, we're going to, um, I guess, roll up all this bubble wrap to get it out of the way. Okay, more tape. Okay. Alright. A lot of bubble wrap on here. Okay, they have some contact information here, so I don't know if I should put that in the video. I think I shouldn't, so let me go like that. Okay, we're going to peel off the more tape. Thanks. Thanks for your purchase. I just want to let you know many XGS may take up to five minutes. To okay, so that's not contact information. Anyways. Um, yeah, so basically it's saying that the computer will take some time to boot up a lot of the times. The reason that is is because when you disconnect the battery, it also acts as the BIOS or CMOS battery. So, yeah. And then if it has any issues, they said to just let them know. Anyways, set that aside. Okay, so here we have the screen. I'll put more tape here. It's a lot of tape. Okay. There we go, we'll take this out, and here we have the replacement screen. Let's set the scissors aside, bubble wrap and stuff aside. Okay, so we have the replacement screen here, just like this. It has the, all the connectors, same connectors, and the tape. So we're gonna go ahead and take the computer back here. Okay, there's a slight mark on it, but not too bad. All right, anyways, we're gonna lift this up. Okay, and we're gonna drop this screen into place. Oh, make sure this doesn't go in there. Hopefully this doesn't have the same issue as the other one, because if it does, that means the motherboard has some issue. And if the motherboard has an issue, that's gonna suck. All right, anyways, we got this in place. We're gonna now put those screws back in. Okay, make sure to tighten them down really well. It does help actually to put a little thread locker in here. So I'm gonna put a little thread locker on these because we don't want these screws to come loose. If they come loose, it makes this break a lot easier. So I'm gonna get a little thread locker here, if I can. Oh, my thread locker bottle's getting clogged. I'm gonna have to clear that clog in a bit. Oop, okay. So just get a tiny bit on there, not even a drop. And we'll get that in. We'll tighten that up. All right, I accidentally dripped some out, so I'm gonna use that if I can. Okay. Hold these cables out of the way and get that screw in. Wait, where'd this screw come from? What? Huh? Was that, was that in the screen already? <laughs> Okay, so they had a screw. Probably the cables were on top and held it in place, but 
I don't need that screw because I already have the screws. So we'll set that aside. Okay. I <laughs> dripped the thread locker stuff there, so I'm going to get these in. Okay. Let's get these last two screws in. Make sure it's all lined up. After I get these in, I'm going to zoom back out. So, or zoom back in because right now it's zoomed out way too far. All right. One more here. Okay. And we'll get the last screw in. Okay. Let me clean this stuff off my desk. I don't want that there. Okay. All right. So we should be good to go. What I do now is I put the screen side down and then I carefully close it. It helps to kind of push on the hinges as you do it to help with the closing so that all the force isn't on this area. Let's go ahead and zoom in now. Okay, so we got this now. Now we got to reconnect all the cables here. So let's go ahead and line everything up and get all of these back in. So first thing... Um, I guess we can't put that yet. We're going to have to put this down first. Okay, and we're going to line this up with that screw hole. All right, just like that. Line that up. And we'll get this one in. There we go. Make sure that's good. Making those crunchy noises. Get that stuff out. Okay. Then we're gonna go ahead and line this all up. This one had the tape here. This one, the tape is actually longer. All right, we got this cable. You want, oops, let's actually zoom in, sorry. Okay, so this cable, you want it with the exposed metal pins facing up like that. They actually put a little white dot on the connector so you know, get that in and then push that into place. It helps to kind of pinch both, both pieces together. All right, next we're going to get this cable into place. Oh, that this adhesive is all wrapped on itself. Uh, let me see if I can get that unwrapped here. Uh, they stuck it on the other one. Okay, there we go. And this one is for that part that goes over there. Okay, we'll get this connector back in that I just took out. There we go. All right, now we'll get all of this lined back up over here. It looks like this cable, they did a patch job on it. Maybe, I don't know, it was broken or something. Hopefully it works. Whatever they did. Okay, we'll get this back in here. Okay, now that we got that in, let's go ahead and get those two screws in. We're gonna switch to the JS0. Okay, because this one was under here. All right, why isn't it going in? Did I mix up? Get that back out. <laughs> I think I used the wrong one. Okay, sorry, I grabbed the wrong screw. This is the one for the motherboard. That's why you got to keep all the screws in order. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to get them in. Or if in some cases, you can even damage the computer if you use the wrong, like if it's too long, it can extend too far and then go through and damage stuff. All right. But anyways, there we go. Switch back to the GIS one. Next, we got all of this back in, right? Okay, get all of that guided in. Got this tape here, so we're going to tape that down. And we got this tape thing here. We'll tape that down. All right, and then we got this tape, but we'll put that after. So we'll get the LCD LVDS connector lined back up. Click that in, good. Get that back over here. I don't want it to go into the fan, so I'm gonna angle it over there. Okay, then we got this metal plate, and that's where those other two screws came from that I was trying to put in the wrong spot. These screws are a little bit wider, like fatter, so they couldn't even go in the screw mount, which is good, because otherwise I would have damaged the threads. But there we go, tighten that in, tighten this one in. Perfect, get this tape back over the top. Good, all right. And then we gotta get all these connectors on this side in. Okay, get this adhesive thingy out of the way. 
we're going to get the wireless card in here. Okay, we got all these cables, so we'll get the camera one in first. Line it up. Again, make sure the exposed metal pins are facing up. Line it up. And push it in. Come on. Nope. Go in straight. Don't go at a weird angle. Come on. It's like, okay, it's angled too far down, so it's being a pain to get this in. There we go. Pinch that in. Okay, make sure it's not going out here. Next one. Got the touchscreen cable. Line that up. Pinch that in. Good. Okay, make sure this is out of the way. Then we get the wireless antennas. White one here. Line that up. And click it into place. Why isn't it clicking in? There we go. Alright. And then the black wire. I feel like this white wire, they did something to it. It's kind of <laughs> not... I don't know. There's a lot of excess slack here. Okay. Well, the excess slack will hold down the other cables. Then we'll get the white one in, or the black one in, sorry. Line it up, good. And click that down. There we go. All right, we got all those cables in. Put that tape back over to keep them from going up into here. We'll take the metal bracket here, line that up, drop it in, get that screw, tighten this into place. Good, all right, now we just got the battery and the bottom cover and we should be good to go. So we're gonna go over here, actually should probably zoom in a little bit more, okay. I'll take the battery now. Okay. So again, I'm gonna tuck this underneath because I prefer this cable on top. Okay. Get that lined up. All right, so I'm gonna stick the tape onto this piece right there. If you want, you can peel up all these ones and stick them all back on the battery. They don't need to be on the battery. I don't know why they chose that design, but I'm going to do it because that's how they had it. So yeah. And then these two are on the motherboard. All right. This will be a little bit tricky. Get this out. Okay. And then it'll be easier to put this thing back on here. So I'm going to actually do that last. So we'll get this cable here and then the last one on there. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and get these screws back in. One all the way over here. Okay. One down here. One up here. And then we got the JS0 right here. All right, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna plug the battery in. Make sure it goes in straight, not at an angle. Okay, just like that, and then pinch it in. There we go, let's get the bottom cover back on. Get the screws in and power this baby up. All right, so get that in. Good. Oops, let me zoom out here for you guys. Oh, not that much. Okay. Probably should have done a thumbnail again here. Uh, but thumbnail, I don't know, probably isn't necessary. Because I think I already got it earlier. But, right? Three, two, one. All right. Let's get this cover back on. So this has these clips going up the sides and the front. So make sure you clip those back in. Okay. And we should be good. Let's just get these screws all into place. So JS0 in the center again. <clears throat> good. All right. And then T5, Torx 5 on all the rest. Then we're just going to power it up, make sure everything works, and we should be good to go. And hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, make sure to like, subscribe, 
share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade or repair their devices. Leave a comment, I'll comment back. Um, I answer every single comment. Sometimes YouTube doesn't show me that there was a comment, so if you don't get a response, you can just write another comment and spam me and eventually I'll see it, hopefully. <laughs> but uh, yeah, anyways, we're gonna get all these screws back in. Also, if this video helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Um, but yeah, we got these last two screws. We're going to power it up and see what we got. Okay, last one. Hopefully the screen works. If it starts doing a flashing code with like orange, amber lights and white lights, then we know that it's a motherboard issue, but hopefully not. Okay. I noticed there's a slight little ding on this too, but anyways, let's go ahead and power it up. So far, nothing's on the screen. The power light's on. This thing isn't flashing. Oh, and we got screen. So we should be good to go. That should be it. Hopefully it's booting up. It's saying, please wait. So something's going on here, maybe because it was turned on and off so many times without the screen. But uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Let's drop this bike.